The thing about mashups to me though, they have to be the perfect thing. You can't just like put two things together and hope it works. To me, it has to make sense. There has to be a psychology behind it. Can you rate my Thunder Thundercats hoe? Sure, go ahead. And give me an honest answer. All right. Okay. Thunder. Thunder. Thundercats Ho! I feel like whatever you watch them in, it's the Muppets and you can always have like a feel good moment with them. Well, that's, you just said it. It feels good, doesn't it? Hey guys, welcome back to another interview here on Tone In Entertainment. Today we're at UltraCon 2022. I'm definitely very excited because I'm here with Larry Kenny. How are you doing? I'm fine, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic Good. because Thundercats is my favorite cartoon of all time. I love to hear that. It's yeah. mine too, by the way. It is yours too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it even ranks above uh, like Silver Hawks. Well, that's a close call there. Close call. <laughs> Now, why did 80s cartoons rock so much over kind of like whatever we've got since then? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I don't really know. I think uh, I've never really thought about that. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me questions that I haven't asked, been asked a million times. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was a kind of a special era for a lot of things, I think, uh, entertainment-wise especially. And and, uh, and then why, why today, of course, uh, things have to change. You have to have new new things. Uh, and I guess most of us think that, feel that the, the, the things we liked when we were young uh, were the best ever, you know, because you're into it then. You were, you know, you're a young kid or whatever. And um, I always like to say nostalgia ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Well, I think the Thundercats still holds up to this day, though. I think so, too. I really do. It's such a well-done show, and I, of course I would say that because I was a part of it, but uh, we knew, you know, people ask, do ask me a, a lot of times, did you guys know that you had a big hit on your hands? Well, you never know in, in, in the entertainment industry, whether it's a movie or a TV show or anything like that. We knew, when I say we, uh, the cast and the crew, um, we knew the product was good. The writing was we had the great writers. The music was incredible. Uh, the animation was the, the best it had ever been, I think, at the time. Maybe still is. And um, we had some pretty good actors on it. So we, we knew it had a, sh a chance. But you never know. I mean, you can have all those elements and a show might not be a hit for various reasons. Maybe it was a, a bad time, zo time spot slot. Uh, maybe the network uh, doesn't promote it as much as they could and should. And all those factors come together and sometimes um, what you think is going to be a big hit doesn't become one. But we were, we were very lucky. I think the timing was just right for that show. Now, you had to say some of the same lines over and over and over yeah. again, like, sort of omens, you know, provide me sight beyond sight. Did you just do a bunch of those at one time in different tones or did you read it every single new episode? Every time. Uh, even even uh, Thundercats Ho, you know, the Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats Ho! Uh, every, every time it was in the script, I, I recorded it. Um, and I think the reason for that is uh, studios vary, you know, and we, we'd be maybe in one studio uh, in, a, 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 in a complex one day, and the next day maybe down the hall or something like that. And um, room noises vary, you know, ambience and um so they wanted me to do it each time it was it was fine you know didn't hurt right <laughs> now i could tell that you did it each time i or, i was pretty sure yeah. because i went back and watched one of my favorite episodes actually last night yeah. where the thundercats had to take on a guy that you're probably familiar with safari joe oh, that's right yes yeah, safari joe i did him yeah that was me yeah right and <laughs> Lionel was pretty ticked off when he had to summon the Thundercats in that particular episode. And I was like, I could feel the emotion of Lionel just being very angry in that particular episode. Yeah, I, seem, I seem to recall that, yeah. Of course, there are a lot of episodes, 130 of them. So, and so it, it, it makes me laugh a lot of times when people say, uh, like at panels at these Comic-Cons, where we answer questions that people ask. And somebody usually always comes up and says, Mr. Kenny, uh, in episode 126, and I go, oh, no. No. I, just, <laughs> no. I say, you know, you people remember the episodes better than I do. You know, we were just actors doing a job, and you were, you were taking it all in. But it's, it makes me laugh, and they say, like, in that episode, I noticed that 
Lionel comes through the door with a sword in his left hand. But when he gets to the other side of the door, he's got the sword in his right hand. What's that all about? <laughs> Why would you even care about that? You know? I it's a cartoon. Right. I promise I'm not going to ask you any <laughs> trivia like that because I can feel that's just a little overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> can be sometimes, yeah. Now, the Thundercats, since being on TV, they've done other things. Do you have to keep up with maybe, like, the comic books? Because do people say, hey, in the comic book, Lionel did this, but he never did this in maybe the cartoon? I don't have to because I'm not a writer. Oh, okay. I didn't write them. <laughs> so I just I just read what they told me to read. You okay. Know? Uh no, I, I never um, never had to worry about that. Okay. It wasn't my job. My job was to talk. I talk for food. That's my I used to have a business card that said I talk for food. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, any time that uh, Lionel would use a sort of omens, it was always like Mumra behind it, right? But why was Lionel always shocked that it was like, Mumra, how could this be you? <laughs> I don't know. I never thought about it. I don't know. Uh... I have no idea yeah, why he was always shocked. See, you're getting close to asking one of those questions. Uh oh, uh oh, let's not do that. <laughs> now, the Thundercats had, um, you know, the episodes always try to have some type of positive message behind them. How important was that, you know, maybe back in the 80s and maybe mm -hmm. even into today? Well, as a matter of fact, Thundercats was conceived uh, for that very reason. Uh, up until Thundercats came along, uh, cartoons had to be getting begun to get more violent. Um, and as a matter of fact, there was a movement started by, I, th I think, uh, two housewives who had kids. And uh, this, they started this campaign and became a huge nationwide campaign to get reduce the violence on all children's programming, not just cartoon shows, you know. Uh, and also they, they, they thought that the, um, it was getting too, too much about selling the toys and stuff like that, which it was. And so um, Rankin Bass, sensing this movement and following it, decided to make a show that, that has, uh, gives moral lessons and uh, where, where the heroes just don't go around killing the bad guys. If you'll recall, the Thundercats, they would fight when they had to, but they always would try to talk it out first, which is a good lesson to, for kids to learn, I think. So that's really why the show was um, created. That's, uh, I mean, they're going to do a new cartoon show, but they, let's do it that way. Let's, you know, they, they probably sensed that maybe um, cartoons were going to have to change, and they did. And so they got, they got uh, their foot in the door, uh, first one. Now, being a voice actor, especially back in the 80s, you know, we didn't have the Internet to look up, you know, put a face to maybe yeah. who the voice was. Did you ever play any, like, practical jokes on anybody with using the Lionel voice or any other cartoon voice? No. No, no, <laughs> that's unacceptable. <laughs> you mean like on Friends and people like there, there, something like that? Or just maybe if you went to a toy store and like you stood in the aisle, oh, like I always, oh, oh. I always imagine like me at Toys R Us, and then you come up behind me and be like, "Son, <laughs> I'm Lord you of the Thunder." The story about Toys R Us? No. Oh, really? I, th I thought you were trying to lead up to that, lead me into it. No, I, I try not to watch any. Oh. I, I like to ask my own questions. Good idea. But since you mentioned it. When I first realized that the show was a big hit, was um, it had been on the air for several months, and it was getting near Christmas. It was about two weeks before Christmas, and um, I went to Toys R Us Christmas shopping. And the, the the time previous to that that I had been to Toys R Us, there was uh, one big aisle of Thundercats stuff on both sides, and then there was a He-Man aisle and Ninja Turtles aisle and all that. Best time ever. Uh, yeah. Ever. Yeah, a lot of great cartoons. <laughs> right. And uh, this time when I walked in, there's three aisles of just Thundercat stuff. And I thought, wow, this show's a hit. And as I'm walking by, there are two young fellas, probably 10, 12 years old, and they're looking at the action figures. And I heard one of them said, I'm going to get Panthro. He's the coolest, you know. And the other guy says, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to get Tigra. Well, I couldn't contain myself. I said, hey, guys, why don't you get Lionel? He's the one who says, Sword of Omens, come to my hand. And these kids looked at me like, you know, who the hell is this guy? So I, I just kind of walked on. And as I got about 10 feet from him, I heard one kid say, he didn't even sound like Lionel. <laughs> and I thought, if he only knew. 
<laughs> he just did. I assumed you must have heard that story because I've, I've told it, you know, a lot yeah, of times. I try not to watch. Like, I really like do when I do my research. I try to look at other things yeah. and not watch other people's That's interviews. A good idea. I know. That's the same question. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you've done a thousand interviews you're gonna get asked the same questions yeah. no matter who. I, I like that uh, that's what I would do too if I were doing interviews is not let myself get uh, caught up in what everybody else has asked and come up with my own questions okay how, I commend you for that oh well thank you thank you now how has the industry changed from doing voice acting from back in the 80s to here 2022 the biggest change is uh, strangely enough uh, that we tend to work alone now if, like when you do a, a animated show now, uh, they, do, they, they record one person at a time. Uh, and when we were, were doing our shows, everybody was in the, in the room, all, in the studio, every time we recorded. And I liked it better like that. And even commercials are done that way now, too. You, you, I might be on the, in a studio in New York, and somebody's in a studio in L.A., and they patch them together, you know, so you never even see the person you're working with. And I liked it better when we were doing ensemble work because uh, an actor needs somebody to, to play off of, you know, and, and get reaction from and react to. Um, and you, you don't have that now. And it's, it's, it's just not as much fun for one thing, you know. But um, I don't know. I, and I still haven't been able to find out why they do it that way now. I've, I'm sure it's budgetary reasons more than anything. I mean. Well, you, you, but you would think it would be a lot more expensive to have one person record and then another person come in and record. I don't know. There's got to be a reason for it. But um, I'm not doing that much work in now. I'm kind of backing off. I just turned 75 last week, and it's time to slow down. My I, wife, I did see the awesome portrait that somebody made for your Instagram with Lionel oh, yeah, and yeah. all the Thundercats around. It's a happy birthday. Yeah, happy nice. 75. Wasn't that great? I it think was, that was a... a a fellow from Puerto Rico who made that for me. I get a lot of stuff sent to me like that. It's really, it, it's really nice, you know. Yeah. So there was another one. Uh, did you see the one from Peru where uh, they had me in a carrot top type? I, I did though. I did see that one too. Yes, <laughs> that was a birthday card. Well, so was the other one. Yeah. 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 Now, I have great fans. It's you fans, do. I really have the greatest fans in the world. I mean, how can you not? You were lion o. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pardon me. Now, now speaking of, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Now speaking of Lion O, I did bring my Funko Pop here, oh, yeah. and I would love, love for you to sign this for me. It. My favorite guy. It has to be. It's my favorite one too. You know, like I was a Funko Pop collector. I had hundreds of Funko Pops, but I've since got rid of most of them. But my six Thundercats are Great. staying in my collection. I'd love to hear it. Can I just use this for a second? Absolutely, you can. Make sure this, uh, it's an ink, an ink pen. We got. I mean, this I this pop pen. this pop is pretty special. We got to make sure it's all all good here. Well, this is a paint pen, so you have to make sure it's painting. You know. Okay. Now, how would you like me to? Uh, oh, you can personalize it to you or to Tony, of course. This is not leaving my collection. All right. This is super exciting right here. My <laughs> favorite Funko Pop. My favorite cartoon character of all time. Oh, shake the table. oh sorry, I am shaking the table. <laughs> I'm getting way too excited here. Okay. Now, while you're signing that, uh, it's a little difficult to sign, you know, because um, you can't get put your hand right down. So, if you don't mind, I'm okay, gonna, gonna do I I will give you a little bit of room here. Whatever you need, I'm gonna make it happen. I just learned this yesterday from that man across the aisle, Mark Dodson. Okay. He was on Gremlins and um, Star Trek and I mean Star Wars and all those things. So he taught me to do it like this. Of course, I have to get this way. Uh-oh. He has to get this way here. It's awesome that my Thundercat Funko Pop is being autographed right now. Definitely my favorite one in my whole collection here. Now, while you're signing that, I am going to lead into one of my last questions is, you know, in the 80s, there were so many awesome cartoons like He-Man. Look at that. Look at that baby right there. There were so many awesome cartoons like He-Man and G.I. Joe and Transformers, and they've all got live action movies. And over the years, it's been talked about, and even right now, they're talking about, it's going to happen. Are we going to see not only a Thundercats live action movie, which we definitely need, but an awesome Thundercats action movie, which we're all begging for? I don't know anything more than you do, really. No. I... I uh... I know every few years there's a rumor on the internet 
There have even been some uh, rather well done trailers. One had Brad Pitt in it as Lion O. Right, the fan and, made uh, trailers and stuff. It was, and somebody spent a lot of money to make that, and I don't know why, because they never made the movie. Uh, in 2011, uh, Warner Brothers, who at that time had bought the rights to uh, all the Rankin Bass stuff, announced they were going to do a CGI movie, a, a Thundercats movie. And then about a month later, they put that on the back burner, and we did the 2011 version of Thundercats. And since then, I haven't heard anything about uh, a new movie. No. Let's just hope so. I still have the leotard, uh, but it, it doesn't fit as well as it used to. <laughs> so I probably wouldn't be in a, in a live you know, action movie. I think we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available if somebody wants to do a movie. <laughs> higher, higher, higher. Now, the 2011 Thundercats movie, it definitely came out in a time in my life where, like, I didn't think cartoons were cool anymore. And even though the Thundercats were my favorite growing up, like, it wasn't something I got into right away. But I, it's recently on Hulu, and I've gone back and watched mm -hmm. it, and I've really grown in appreciation. And you did have a little bit of a role in that show as well, too. Waters, Lando's father. Right. Yeah, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. I thought it was a very good series. Uh... And I, I, I really was surprised when they decided not to make more than, I think, one season. I forget how many episodes we did. But I really thought they, they did a good job with it. The people uh, who did it from Warner Brothers were all, had been Thundercats fans when they were kids. Which you can tell by watching it. You can tell it. by watching it, exactly. And that's really the main reason I agreed to do it, is because I've always been very protective of the legacy of Thundercats. Uh, mainly because of the, the things that so many people have told me what it meant to them when they were kids. And, you know, a lot of people don't have good childhoods. And I, I, so many people have told me in, in varying degrees of detail about their childhood, you know. And uh, uh, they, they would say things like, but when I went in my room for the 30 minutes and watched Thundercats, all those things went away. So that touches my heart. And, I, and I, I've always been very protective. Uh, of, like when I'm offered something to do as Lionel or something, I, I won't do it unless it's uh, true to the Code of Thunder, if you want to say, you know? So, um, so I, I was happy that when they, when they called me for um, the 2011 one, of course I met with them first, read this, a couple of scripts, and after talking to the guys involved and the ladies involved, I could tell that, that they were going to treat it right. They, they were going to, you know... I wasn't later going to be uh, uh, sorry that I did it. Right. You know. Yeah. Now, speaking of, you know, the Code of Thunder, there was a little fun that Lino did have outside of the Thundercats universe when he was on the episode of Family Guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about maybe, well, at the end, Lionel says, you know, let's all get wasted. If Lionel was to get wasted, what would he get wasted on? Uh, some some kind of Thunderian weed, probably. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. That, that, that's perfect. We don't need to explain any more than that. I had to really think hard and long about doing that. Uh, I wasn't going to do it. And my son, uh, because, uh, as I just told you, I went through a whole thing about how I, I'm protective of the legacy. I don't want to do anything uh, that's going to denigrate the the legacy of it, you know. And, and that's that's which that does it because it's Family Guy. It's, it's, it's fa that's the right. thing. And when when I told my son that I it was offered, the, the thing about it, I said I'm, I'm not going to do it, and he said, "Why, Dad? People are dying. To, actors are acting, asking if they can be on that show, you know. And a lot of the big stars are, are doing that show." And I said, yeah, well, I don't, want the, I don't want my fans and, you know, the kids to, and my son said, Dad, your fans aren't kids anymore. They're 35, 40 years old. Because I screamed like a little girl when that came on. Yeah. I was like, it's Lionel, I'm family guy. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll do it. But if I get one person who's mad at me for doing that, you know, I'm going to kill you. And unfortunately, I did not have to kill my son. I smacked him around a little bit, but I didn't uh, have to kill him. <laughs> well, I thought it was a great. I, it was it was like the perfect little thing to give a little nostalgia, yeah. but a little comedy and a little something outside the realm of yeah. normal Thundercat. I even watch it every maybe once or twice a year on, on YouTube. Right. Just because uh, it is funny. Yeah. It's, I, it's about, about a minute and a half, two minutes. Something. Yeah, I think it's like forty-five. I rewatched re it last night. Actually, it's like forty-five seconds. Really? It's really yeah. really short, but a great piece. Well, Larry, you're here at UltraCon yeah. doing autographs and pictures. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Where can people look you up, and maybe what other future projects or something you have going on? Uh, well, uh, right now I'm currently doing uh, Teen Titans Go. Occasionally, I'm a recurring character. Uh, 
name the chief. Um, I'm still doing commercials. I've been doing Skittles commercials for 22 years, I think. I'm the guy at the end of all of them. It says, feel the rainbow, taste the rainbow. Okay. And still doing um, a few other things. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Now I'm on Facebook if people, and Instagram. Okay. They can find me there. They can, and you're very receptive. I reach out to you. You're very kind, and we made this interview happen. So thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Now, before we let you go, can you rate my Thunder Thundercats ho? Sure. Go and ahead. give me an honest answer. All right. Okay. Thunder. Thunder. Thundercats ho! Not bad. Not okay. bad. But it should really sound like this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> thunder. 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 Thundercats. Oh! And just like that. Yeah, work on it a little bit. You'll get it. I will work on it, but I've got goosebumps to worry about right now because that was amazing. Well, Larry, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And guys, if you like interviews like this with the Lord of the Thundercats lineup, <laughs> make sure you stay tuned in here to Toned In Entertainment for future videos. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.